Today on Riff Spirits and Gear, we recreate Adam Jones's guitar tone from Tool's Anima album. Since I started doing this guitar tone recreation series, one of the most requested tones by far has been that of Adam Jones of Tool fame. Now, Adam has had a bunch of different guitar tones from album to album. So while we will get to all of those, eventually I'm going to start with what I consider to be, I don't know, his definitive guitar tone, or at least the first guitar tone that I identified the band with. And that is the title track to the Tool record, Anima. And I got to see them on that tour and it was just a phenomenal experience. And Adam's guitar tone live at that time was pretty much identical to what it was in the studio. Now, when I saw Tool on the Anima tour, uh, Adam was using an old two channel dual rectifier, a, a Blueface diesel VH4 and his tried and true modded Marshall super bass head with, uh, I believe it was all Mesa Boogie 412 cabinets. Now, I had a mutual friend reach out to Adam and ask him specifically what was uh, used as far as the amps go on the Anima record. And he responded with, it was generally a combination of a couple of different amps, being the dual rectifier, the VH4, the super bass, and sometimes uh, a Rivera or a wizard amp uh, as well. So whatever combination they were feeling for that particular part is what they would go with. So there wasn't any standard combination for the entire record. And that was pretty evident when I got to diving in to recreating some of these guitar tones. Now I'm gonna be doing a small snippet of the song Anima and the intro guitar track is, which is just off center panned and goes all the way into uh, up to the chorus is not quite martially and it's not quite rectifier. And actually, surprisingly enough, uh, I ended up using the Universal Audio uh, Diesel VH4 plugin on channel three, which is Adam's preferred channel for VH, the VH4. And I used his settings that I found a picture of on the internet. And shockingly, it nails Adam's tone for the intro of that song. I was really, really quite surprised. Now, when you get into the chorus, the guitars become double tracked and those aren't very marshly. They're also not very diesel-y as well. Those are pretty straight up dual rectifier with a hint of Marshall from what I can tell by listening to the recording. So what I did is I went with my two channel dual rectifier and I added just a dash of my modified 85 Marshall JCM 800. The 800 is sitting very, very low, but is giving the track enough of the upper mids that it needs to kind of be punchy and cut through. But I will also note that I'm using a little bit more gain than Adam did on the Anima record as back then, I think he was pretty undergained as far his, as his guitar tones go. Not a lot of gain, he's just hitting really hard with his uh, Silver Burst uh, Gibson Les Paul Custom with a Duncan JB. So that is what I will be more or less using, a 1990 Bernie Les Paul Custom with a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. Now real quick, I wanna shout out two different people for helping make this video possible. Greg, my buddy from Acts of Creation, I'll link down below to his YouTube channel. Um, he has a lovely video on how to play the bass part for this song, which I found very, very informative. And my buddy, Uncle Ben, Ben Eller, for pointing out that I am playing the verse riff incorrectly. It's actually tapped with a polyrhythmic thing on top. I'm playing it wrong. Yep, I'm playing it wrong. Oh well, it's about guitar tone, not how to play the parts correctly. I just thought I would shout out those two guys because uh, you know what is absolutely worth mentioning and they helped make this video possible. And without further ado, let's get to the track and let's get into how I did it.
Okay, so here is the DAW session with which I recorded the Enema cover. Now, up here we have the drums. Uh, here we have the, uh, it's a DI track, and it's just a single guitar panned a little bit left of center. Okay. Now down here, you'll see the two DIs for the chorus, left and right. And we have a series of guitars. And the first group of four um, are the Marshall JCM 800. And then we have another group of four that's doing the heavy lifting. Uh, these are the rectifier, right? So on my cabinet, I have a Vintage 30 and a cream back and each of them, uh, each of the speakers are mic'd up. So we have two guitar tracks per performance per amp, giving us a total of eight guitar tracks. And then down here we have the bass DIs, okay? I'm gonna collapse the bass and we're gonna start with the intro guitar track. Now the intro guitar track is a diesel VH4 amp sim from Universal Audio, channel three. I am processing this a little bit because uh, I don't, I can't get the, the speaker IR to sound exactly how I want it. So I processed it to sound it like I want it. So I'm gonna turn off the processing and hear how, here's how it sounds, just, just the amp sim by itself with the settings that are more or less what uh, Adam had marked on an amp of his that someone took a picture of. Okay, it's pretty close. What I'm doing is I'm coming in with a, a Universal Audio uh, SSL E-channel strip, and I'm just trimming off some of the high end a little bit. I'm boosting a little bit of the upper mids and boosting some of the low end. Um, and I'm doing a high and low pass filter, and that's about it. Then I'm coming in this on and then I'm coming in with an Oxford EQ and doing a little bit more fine tuning. There's some lower mid muddiness and I'm taking that out. I'm also trimming out some of the low end and the top end even more. Okay, so currently here's how it sounds. Okay. Next, I'm coming in with a distressor. Um, I'm lightly compressing, uh, just a three to one ratio, nothing super heavy, nothing super crazy, uh, just to get some levelness. I am then coming in with a pull tech, adding some more low end and trimming off some more top end as well. There's a lot of uh, sizzle, sizzly frequencies. Currently, here's how this sounds. Last but not least, my favorite plugin ever, the Oxide Tape. Now this is doing a lot of the lifting as far as the tone goes. I'm gonna uh, play it back for you and then I'm gonna switch it on in the middle of the track. Uh, it really gives it uh, a lot of life. And I really think this is key, especially in an amp sim uh, situation. Uh, this gives it just a lot of a uh, lot of sauce, and I like that. It's just dripping with with sauce. So that's the intro guitar, and that's that way all the way up to the chorus. Now with the chorus guitars, I have very very similar processing, basically the same plugins, uh, set differently. So I'm gonna turn off these plugins. And I'm going to solo the guitar. And you'll notice down here, I have the Marshall 800 at minus 15.4 dB. It's barely on. It's just, it's just kissing it just a little bit. And here's how it sounds, no processing.
okay? Sounds pretty good. I like that just a little bit of upper mid thing that the uh, Marshall is adding to the rectifier. Um, it's definitely not very present at all. Uh, the Mesa is doing a lot of that tone. I'm coming in with an SSLE channel. I'm adding a little bit of top end, taking out some of the upper mids and adding some low end. And I'm also uh, doing a high and low pass filter. I'm then coming in with the Oxford EQ. And this is where I, I trimmed out a lot of the low end as well as the lower mids. I did a lot of work with the lower mids because the rhythm guitar on the actual record is, I don't know, it's specific. I've spent 20, 25 years listening to that. I know how it sounds and it's kind of difficult to get that mid range. It's a very unique, it's not a quacky mid range. It's just a very, very nice mid range. So I'm gonna play it so far with, I'm still gonna keep it isolated. I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna turn it on. You'll hear the difference in what this is doing. And then I'm coming in with a distressor. Again, three, three to one ratio. I'm just kissing it, just for a little bit of levelness. And then I'm coming in with a pole tech and I'm adding some, some low end, I'm adding some top end, and I'm also attenuating the top end a little bit as well. That uppermost top end, I don't want any of that stuff, okay? And then again, not shockingly, I have the oxide tape doing most of the heavy lifting as far as that sauce goes. So I'm gonna start with it off, turn it on, and actually I wanna play the whole mix this time too. And that is how I basically shaped the tone to get uh, Adam Jones' signature guitar tone in the Tool record, Anima. Now, I know this isn't, it's a little bit more gained out than his actual recorded tone. However, I do think I got it fairly ballpark and in future editions of this video series, uh, we'll tackle the 10,000 Days tone um, and I don't know, probably all of the albums uh, to be honest with you, but that is uh, that is the the tone for this album. If you have a suggestion for other album tones that you would like to hear, leave a comment down below. And maybe we'll do it on a future episode. Fluff out. Wow, another video gone by. Hope it was pretty good. I mean, it's probably pretty good. But if it wasn't, <laughs> awkward, right?